Hi, hi, hello, hello, good morning to you and yours. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I hope you're walking in Christ and I hope you're walking with light. Uh, my name is Okwemi Kaode. This is Across the Atlantic Ministry. If you're new to this platform, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. For those who have been kin followers, I also welcome you. Thank you for the love and the support. Thank you for walking this journey and vision um, with me. And I hope that the words that you've been hearing from this platform has been a part and parcel of, of, of your life. I hope it's brought rejuvenation, has brought light to you, you know, salvation and righteousness to all that concerns you. Because that's the most important thing about this platform, to share the word of God and also to bring you closer to the sovereign God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Father Lord, as I speak today, Father Lord, let your word be a piercing sword through the hearts of men and let it bring life to them. Let it be a seed planted in their hearts. And I pray that as men listen to this, it shall bring them the goodness, the peace, the light, the salvation, the righteousness, the glory that they desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak through me. This is for your glory and for nothing else. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In your mighty and glorious name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Today is the 14th, I'm sure. Sorry, today is the 18th of December. We thank God for letting us see the latter part of the year. It's been an amazing journey from January till this very date. But I know that the year is not yet over. What are your plans for the rest of the year and your plans for next year? What are you still asking God for? It's never too late for you to seek because he that seeketh will find. God is still at beckon. He is still at beckon. He is ready. His arms are wide open to receive you, to take you and to bring you into his kingdom, which is the kingdom that is filled with the glory, the glory that man can give but only him can give. Pray that at this point in time, do not be irrational about the decisions you are making due to frustrations or due to, due to the things that you are going through, but make decisions that you are sure that God is part of, especially at this latter part of the year. And I pray that He will grant you His discernment, His love, and His mercy and grace to be able to walk the rest of the year in His glory. Our topic for today is hearing and doing the word. Be a hearer and a doer of his word. Do not just hear. You know, the reason why I do this is to, you know, instill that word of God in your heart. To make sure that it is in your face constantly. But I just don't want you to hear this word. I want you to do it as well. Because it is in action you begin to see the advantage. You begin to see, you know, what it means to walk with Christ. It is in doing, it is in taking action. It's, it's, it's in making that move. It is in, you know, indulging yourself with what the scriptures and the word of God says. That is when you begin to see a result of walking a life of righteousness and salvation. So I don't want you to just come to this platform and hear the word alone. I want you to do. Because the result itself comes from doing. Whatever it is, and it's not you taking advantage of God. I want to serve God because of, you know, what I'm expecting, what I'm hoping, what I'm praying for. But you are serving Him because you love Him. You are doing His, His, His will because you truly love Him. And you know that he set his, he placed his life on the cross for you. He died for you and shed his blood for you, for you. You are high salvation. And it's in that will and in that love that you're not just hearing his word, but also being a doer of the word. The, the uh, Bible verse is from the book of James chapter 1 verse 19 to 27. He said, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, Slow to speak, slow to what? Swift to hear. Hear the word of God. Listen. Because when the word of God is imbibed in you, it then also determines what comes out of you. 
it makes your heart very malleable in understanding and doing the things of Christ. But not just that, it also places you in a position whereby before words comes out of your mouth, rot comes out of your mouth, because due to the fact that the word of God has an invite, whatever comes out, comes out with love and the presence of Christ. He said, be swift to hear, but slow to speak, because in the words that we speak, in the things that comes out of our mouth, sometimes we could boomerang and then bring a lot that we don't want. And that is why it's important that we invite the word of God in our heart because how do they say hmm, out of ignorance what is the easiest way to make money out of ignorance easy. men suffer out of ignorance men suffer and he said for the word of man walketh not the righteousness of God because if we walk in God's righteousness, then it's easy to judge. It is easy for us to address things from the righteousness of God than our own understanding. And the word of God said, lean not on your own understanding. Because most of the time, the understanding of men always results to calamity. But walking in the righteousness of God, that then aids whatever decision, whatever it is you are doing, whatever plans that you have, whatever it's journey it is that you want to embark on, you know that God is part of this my journey. He said, 21, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with weakness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. You see, our God is not a God of, um, it's a God of mercy. But from the moment that you are conscious of the world, from the moment that you know what is left and what is right, what is good and what is bad, and then introduction to the word of God itself, inviting that to your soul, into your body, into your spirit, then it's important for you to negate yourself from anything that doesn't make that word of God fulfilled in your life. And God is saying it here. Lay all filthiness, all superfluity, all naughtiness. Receive with weakness the engrafted word. Meekness is humility. Meekness pushes away pride. And then makes you a hearer. And not just a hearer, a doer of the word. You have to engraft it. Engraft it. Because that's the only way soul, your soul can be saved. That's the way our souls can be saved. That's the way we can be rescued from the captivity of the devil. That's the knowledge we need to be able to try love in righteousness and salvation. But you have to do away from sin. Run away from sin. Move away from sin. Reboot sin. Reboot the devil. Anything that looks like filthiness, Anything that you know that you are ashamed of. And not just ashamed of. Anything that you know that the wages at the end of the day brings death. It is time, 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 time to move away from it. So that the word of God can be engrafted in one soul and can also save that person. But be ye doers of the word and not just hearer. Only deceiving your own self. So God is saying, don't go to church and do praise and worship and pray and everything. And every day you leave that place and you begin to act like someone who hasn't gotten the impartation of God at all. Do not live in hypocrisy. Because hypocrisy is deceived to self. So don't just be a rare, be a doer. Actions, actions, take actions. What is it that you know that, oh, you're struggling with? Take actions. It could be love.
lust, it could be pornography, it could be rage, it could be covetousness, it could be lies, it could be, it could be idolatry, whatever it is, take action. It's important for you to be ready to let go. Because that is where the deliverance comes from first. Taking the action, not just hearing that word, but being a doer of it. Whatever it is that the materials that attaches you or that brings you back to that same place that you hate finding yourself, it's time to let go. Whatever type of deals that you know you've got in your hands in four At the end of the day, you know that the end of this so you know that the end of this will bring nothing but sorrow. It's time to let go. Because when you hear that word of God, you have to do. It works together. It works in sin for me. It works symbolically. And he said, For if any be a lair of the world and not a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. <laughs> For he builded himself and went his way and straight, straight away forgetting that what man of man he was. Basically, God, what God is saying is hypocrisy. You know what in hypocrisy. You can deceive men, but you can't deceive God. And it's also good to always use oneself as an example. In as much as when I was really in the secular world, I knew about Christ. I, I heard the word of God. I was preached to, I was spoken to. But then, because I still love the things of the world, in my mind I was like, okay. Oh God, I will pray, I will seek God. And then I go back to sin again. Then later I go to go back to God. Oh, God have mercy. And I thought in that way I could deceive God. Not knowing that I was deceiving myself. The result, at the end of the day, we tell if you are just if you are here and the doer of that word. But I, I was hearing, but I was not doing. So at the end of the day, the result. That result showed that okay. In as much as you are praying. When you need, when you are in a situation or you need something from God. But you are not doing it from the depth of your heart. You are doing it because you need God at that point in time. So it was like me wanting to take advantage of God. That was very hypocritical. Until when one aligned both, when one was ready to let go, when I was ready to let go of all, that was when it was easy for me then to see the results of being a year and two of his world. You can deceive the people, but you can't deceive God. So, my brother and sister, do not hide in that closet of sin. Come out from that hiding place. Don't just hear the word of God. Don't just go to church and say, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No. Do. Do His will. Do His will. 25. But also look at into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Of course, we know we have the liberty to do whatever we like. But you are aware of the fact that I'm not just going to be a doer of the work. I shall walk in. I shall not. I shall not just be a hearer of his work. But I shall also do his work. You know, I talked about results. He said, "But the doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed." When you don't get results, in as much as you are hearing the word but not doing, then you should see that you are actually not working in alignment. It is when you hear and you do that's when you see the blessing of that deed. have the liberty to make whatever decision you want to but think about the results why are you not getting results why does it look like you are you are you are hearing you are praying but you're not getting results ask yourself that question are you really doing as well are you deceiving yourself 
That is my question to you. And I beckon you that it is not too late. The time is now for you to change your mind and be a hearer and a doer of his word. To round this all up, if any man among you seem to be religious and bring them not his tongue, but deceive his own heart, that man's religion is vain. It starts from within. It starts from within. Do not do religion, do righteousness. It is vain. It is vain to be a hearer and not a doer. It is vain to read or not take actions of what you've read. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Be kind, be loving. Help those who are in need. Stay away from sin. Love Christ. Spread his word. Do not be ashamed of him. Trust him. Love him. Take actions for him. Be deliberate for him. I pray for him, intercede for him. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. He is at Beckon. He needs you, my friend. He needs you, my brother and sister. But in doing this, make sure you stay unspotted. The world will want to corrupt. The world will capacitate. The world will, will, will bring so many things. That looks like gold, frankincense, silver, everything. That your heart desire. But make sure that you walk in alignment and cut your heart off anything that could make you spotted. Will make you some sort, some sort of compromisable type of human being that gives the devil an advantage over you. To you is, are you a year and a doer, or you're just a year and not a doer? I ask you, I beg on you, my friend, that be a, a year and a doer of this world so that you will see that blessing and result in such deed. Father Lord, I thank you for your word because your word is life. I thank you because I know this word is for someone out there. I thank you. Because you want your people to not just be a hearer but a doer of your word. I pray that as your people encounter this, as they come across this, they begin to retrace their steps and they begin to hear and do your will. They begin to walk in alignment with you. They begin to walk not in their own glory but your glory. Not in vain glory but your glory. Father Lord, grant your people the grace, the mercy for people to encounter you. Because you are the way and you are the truth and the light. Thank you, Lord, because I know you've done it. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is settled. In your mighty and glorious name I have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. This is the latter part of, this, of the year, December. Make sure you carry a heart of thanksgiving. Make sure you love Christ. Be a year and a doer of his word. Make sure you tell people about Jesus. Do not be ashamed of him. And he would not be ashamed of you. This is Across the Atlantic Ministry. My name is Okwebi Kaudi. We shall have a blessed rest of the weekend. Shalom.